All right, what's up, my good people? Welcome to this video on present uh, perfect. Uh, if you're in class, welcome to the lecture portion of our class. If you're watching online, uh, please make sure to follow and ask any questions that you uh, need to ask, and I'll be more than happy to help. Um, as per usual, our presentation is a Prezi presentation. I didn't come up with this one. This is the person that did, and I will leave the link in the bio if you guys need it in class as well. It will be in the bio of the video. Cool. All right. So my beautiful people in class and online, uh, we're talking about present perfect. Let me move this out of your sight. And this is when we use, so just like in future tense, we use will as a helping verb in a present continuous. We use the verb to be as a helping verb in simple, uh, sorry, in present perfect, we use the verb to have a, as a helping verb. And these helping verbs are also called auxiliary verbs, yeah? So will, have, and to be are auxiliary verbs. When they come in the simple, pre uh, sorry, in present perfect and past perfect and present continuous, past continuous, future continuous, anything of that sort, yeah? Okay? So it's a helping verb, which means that it's going to come before the main verb. So when do we use, uh, oops, sorry, my bad, my people. Okay. So when do we use present perfect? Well, we use the present perfect tense to say that an action happened at an unspecific time before now. Okay. So it's an uninterrupted thing. It happened, but the time is not important. When it happened, doesn't matter. Okay. So let's take a look at these rules so again we use it to say uh to say that an action happened at an unspecific time before now the exact time is not important and uh before we begin talking about the um uh, the actual tense we need to look at the helping verb and like i said in the future we use will in uh, present continuous we use the verb to be in uh, present perfect, we use the verb to have in the present. That's why it's called present perfect, because the verb to have is in the present. Okay, so this is again how you conjugate the verb to have in the present. I have, you have, she has, he has, it has, we have, you have, and they have. Okay, so the, this is something that you have to know. This is why it is, again, in the present, because the verb to have is in the present. And what this verb is doing, it's helping the other verb. It's giving us more information, okay? So we will use this verb as a helping verb when forming the present perfect. Cool? We're good? Okay. So again, I have, you have, they have, and so forth. All right. Any questions so far? No. All right. So this tense is formed using two components. So it means that it has two parts to it. It has the verb to have and then the past participle of the uh, of the main verb. OK, and this is usually the verb with ED. OK, however, if you are in class, then you have a sheet that I printed out, okay? The sheet comes from ESL forms. Um, you can see where it says participle in green, and I can post a copy of this also on uh, um, uh, in the link. But the part that is green, that's the participle, and you can see, uh, for example, the, for, the form, the base form of awake is, awake simple past is awoke and then the participle is awoken okay so what we would need is the verb to have is in the present and then the second verb or the main verb the verb that the verb to have is helping is going to be in the past participle okay so the boat has sunk okay has is in the present sunk is the past participle of what verb can anyone tell me what's the what's the verb sunk in base form 
What verb is that? It's also, it should be on your sink, yeah. So sink, sink, sunk, yeah? It should be on here, I think. No, it's not, it's not on there, okay. My sister has swum, okay? My sister has swum. So swim, swam, swum. So that is, that list is the past participle. That's the one we use with present perfect. We don't use the present tense. We use the past participle. Now for regular verb, that just means ed. I had, I have played uh, with her before. Okay. Yeah. Which we will see in a sense. She has collected. The past tense, uh, that, that looks the same as the past tense, right? You just add ed. For regular verbs, you just add ed. That's it. Okay? If it's conjugated like normally, then it's conjugated like normally, and it just is the past form of it. If it is an irregular verb, odds are there's a, a past participle that you can check your list for. Our guest has arrived. Has is in the present arrived is in the past. Does that make sense? And again, in all of these, I have watched, the teacher has said, these are all conjugated the way they should be, right? So um, when we are using these things, the time isn't important. It happened in the past, but we don't care when it happened. Yeah, it is just, um, we just care that it did, okay? Our guest arrived is almost like an end to that. It just happened once and that's it. Our guest has arrived. It means that it's almost like it's in, in the present moment kind of, but he had, but it's, I'll find a better way to explain it in a second. Let's continue. Let me not confuse everybody. So what is a past participle? Well, a past participle, as we were saying before, it's the past with, end, with an ed ending if it's a regular verb, okay? So it looks just like the simple past. If it's a regular verb, it looks just like the simple past. Yeah? Everyone good on that? Yes? Awesome. Okay. For example, collected, arrived, enjoyed, watched, and so forth. Irregular verbs have a special past participle form that you have to learn. This is what we have in our list of verbs, okay? The list that I have right here, I will leave a link again to, to that in the bio, but this is what we have. If it's irregular, it, has, it usually has a different form. Cool? Oops. Okay, sink, sunk, swum, eaten, okay, said, and this is where we were earlier, okay? So now let's talk about the structure. Oh, we're not gonna watch the video. All right, so now for understanding the present perfect. The present perfect is usually used when the time period is not finished. I have seen the three movies this week, okay? So this week is not done. And this is something that I had done sometime during this week, but the week is not over. The time period is not over. So we use the uh, present perfect. I have seen three movies this week. If it had been finished, then I would be using past perfect. I would say I had seen. Okay, but since the time period is not finished, then this is when we use present perfect, yeah? I have traveled to Mexico three times this semester. Cool? The semester is not over yet, and it doesn't matter exactly when I went to Mexico in this, you know, semester. It just matters that I did do that. Okay, and it's not done yet, so it's in the present perfect. Cool, cool, yeah? yeah, awesome. Okay, so the week is not finished yet. 
two, the present perfect is often used when the time is not mentioned. Again, because the time is not important, so the time is not mentioned. So we don't care when really it happened, okay? Gary has failed his exam again. We don't know what time Gary failed his exam. We don't know what date he failed his exam. We just know that he has failed it, okay? Three, the present perfect is often used when the time is recent, okay? So James has just arrived in Victoria. That was very recent, right? Gary has failed his exam again. That's something that's recent. Cool? So in that sense, if it's recent, we don't really care when exactly. It's also present perfect. Okay? And the present perfect is often used with for and since. So Gary, let me put this up here. Gary has lived here for 20 years. Okay. When you see for, it's usually it usually means that in that sentence you have the simple uh, simple uh sorry present perfect. Yeah. Does that make sense? So for example, she has uh, lived here since her childhood. Um. Tony has won three awards since he began acting. Yeah? Does that make sense? So again, we use it when the time period is not finished, when the time is not mentioned, when the time is recent, and when we use for and since. Cool? And you guys, it's the same as in Spanish. When you have, um, Gary has lived here since 1978. That's the other example. So when you have your, uh, like when you have like, um, it's also the verb, it's not the verb to have, but it's H-E, right? I'm trying to think of what the, the, the base form of that verb would be. But it's also the same rule as in Spanish. If you guys can trace it back. I'll try to think, I'll, I'll look up the rule in Spanish, but I know it's the same one. So when in the places you, you would use, um, okay, I'll try to think of an example and, and to share with you guys. All right, so again, unspecific, unspecified time before now, has, have, plus past participle. That's the structure, okay? So I have seen that movie 20 times, okay? So it doesn't, we don't know when he saw that movie. We just know that he saw that movie 20 times. So it's unspecific, unspecific or unspecified time, yeah? So what do we have? The pronoun plus the verb to have in the present plus the past participle. I have seen that movie 20 times. Have seen, have is the present form of to have, seen is the past participle of to see, okay? I think I've met him once before. Where is, where is my verb? Met is my main verb and then we have have, right? Have and then met. There, ha there, there have been many earthquakes in California. Have been. have been, right? Okay. People have traveled to the moon. Have traveled. Okay, again, we use it when referring to an experience. Okay. I have been to France. Have been, have been right? So when, when we're talking about an experience, that's when we use the present perfect. You have grown since the last time I saw you, right? They've experienced something, which is growth. Our son has learned how to read. Exactly. 
scientists have split oh sorry scientists have split the atom couldn't say it. yes have split thank you i have i have had four quizzes and five tests so far this semester i have had have had so even though had is the same verb as to have right yeah. but that here is the main verb yeah so we can still use have had to describe an experience. We're not watching the video, but oops. all right. So let's see how well you understand the present perfect. Should we do two volunteers? Okay. Anyone want to volunteer to the board? No? All right, one second. All right, we won't do this. It's okay. We're almost done anyways. We're almost out of time. But let me do this. All right. So we did get a chance to practice a little bit, so which is good. But give me one second. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we are going to do this exercise. If you are watching online, um, just pause the video um, to the screen. Ooh, okay. Maybe not. There we go. One second. All right. Um, I will add the link to the video so you guys can see it as well. But people who are in class, you're going to take the next five minutes to answer these questions. Cool? All right. All right, my good people. So, Number one is, I have read your book several times. She has worn that skirt many times. My family has visited Brazil a few times. I have eaten already. Martha has finished her homework. You have broken the glass. They have prayed for everything. It has never oops, snowed like that. Cool? All right. So that is it for this lecture that is it for this video if you're watching online please make sure to like subscribe do what you need to do and if you're here in class uh thanks for hanging out with me and i will see you guys on uh, um thursday <laughs>